Hi, I'm Matt from hockeyreviews.ca and today this video is all about danglers, how I tie it on. I kind of do it in a kind of unique way, but just a general idea of how to put it on and kind of the point of it. Um, but before that, if you are making any purchases in hockey gear, please check out the link in the description to Pure Hockey or Pure Goalie, especially if you're in the US. In Canada, it doesn't really make sense, but if you use that link and you make a purchase, I get a kickback, so help support me and support the channel. And on top of that, if you are looking for any hockey jerseys coming up, check out the link in the description to jerseysmadeeasy.com. Using that link and buying a full set of custom jerseys will help support the channel as well. So I you have a very unique dangler method. Um, I use a dangler because obviously it protects your neck. Mine doesn't really float around a ton, as you can see. And I always wear a neck guard as well. And this kind of just always gives you that little bit extra protection there. And because it doesn't, like it still moves around a bit, but it doesn't swing around like a lot of the, you'll see NHL goalies and a lot of people doing it. So I don't really have issues with this really ever getting away. It never can go up top here. So it doesn't get in the way that way. And it can't get below the chin. So it doesn't get in the way there. The only place it really ever gets in the way is on the shoulder caps but the chin of the mask would still get in the way there anyways. This, so you just have to lift it up like you would normally and it kind of just floats over. Not a huge difference there, um, but yeah. So I'm a huge fan of this specific way to do it. I've done it before with just on the side cage. This one, I went through the holes because it was easy enough to do there. But the big part about this and kind of the unique part about this is how the front one is designed. So a lot of people I've seen have tied it here and it goes through here and it kind of floats. I don't, I go through the actual helmet itself. So you can see it right there. It goes through the cage all the way through the helmet and then into the front of the dangler like this. So the reason I do this is because as you can see, it can't really go far to the sides and it can't go far up and down. You can tighten this so it can't fit below the chin so it doesn't get stuck. And because of how tight that is, it can't go above the chin right there. So it will move with your chest, but it will never go further. And because of also that, it doesn't really shift around too much. So it kind of stays in place and it doesn't rattle around that much. It is kind of right now, but when I play, I don't really notice it. Maybe I'm just used to not noticing it, but it's definitely a lot less than what a lot of other goalies I've seen have. And, and from my experience, it's because of this design and it kind of acts as a little guide right here instead of just being it all free flowing. I think goalie's part sells a double thick chin guard. I think this one is one of those double thick ones. I'm not positive though. I had to just got one really quick for this coveted because I wasn't going to take this one off and this one has a crack in it. So I'm not going to go back to that one. I normally wouldn't buy a Bauer one here. I would go with the Nash one uh, or the, if the double thick one from goalie parts. But like I said, I was kind of in a hurry. So I just grabbed one of these. Also, I normally use skate lace. I'm going to try to just use this lace today because I don't feel like cutting skate lace for this. Uh, but I'll kind of show how do you attach it and kind of the ideas behind it. You can always make this kind of your own thing and how you want it. You can adjust how high the sides are um, and you can obviously adjust how loose it is. This is a weird mask to use a dangler on as you can kind of see. Someone suggested to use a lacrosse dangler. I'm just gonna go with this one because I'm used to it and like it does cover kind of what I want here. So we'll see how that works. So usually, yeah, like I probably will have to use skate lace just because this stuff isn't, usually these laces aren't quite as long for what I need, um, but we'll see what I can get done here. So you have to put it under the chin, chin cup, obviously. And right now it's getting caught on some Velcro on the chin cup and pull it up through here. It is always nice if there's like a little tiny hole at the bottom, but this one doesn't have that. So we're kind of stuck with what we're doing. Just pull it right there. So you have to make it tight enough so this piece won't go below the chin. So that won't go below the chin. That will sit right there, kind of how I want it. So I can just tie that where it is. And the chin piece should be good to go. You can melt the ends of the string if you want. Um, I know some people do that so it really doesn't move anywhere. That one should be pretty good for that. I don't, I'm not gonna melt it, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. It's generally a good idea to rotate this little piece though. That way it doesn't kind of get in your vision or get anywhere near your hole there. Now onto the side. Again, you can do this in a bunch of different spots. You can put it 
through the ear holes of some mass, I'm probably just gonna stick it here um, just because this one isn't super wide. So like it does kind of get caught on these parts because this helmet's kind of an interesting design, but I'm gonna stick it right here and see how that works. I think we'll be okay with that. Just put it right under here to make it easier and we'll try to slide it under here to keep it a little bit up. And this one, you can adjust it. So I'm just gonna tie it just first and then we'll put the other side on and we'll kind of go from there. See, actually, so I'm gonna go with about that much loot, that loose. Um, won't give it a ton of movement, which should be fine but hopefully it keeps it on the outside of this. We'll have to see when I wear it. I might have to wear it pretty tight and keep it right there, but again, we'll have to see from that. I don't think the plastic will really cause paint issues. I'm hoping it doesn't. We'll see how that is. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have issues with this like going up there. Um, so I might have to heat this up and stretch it out, but for the time being, I'm just gonna leave it as is. I'll wear it for a bit, see if I have any issues, and then I can always adjust it in the future. But it's not a huge deal by any means. I'm a lot of people like this is all personal preference how you do this. I've had a lot of people complain about their danglers rat or like kind of moving around, and I've had people complain that it was just too annoying and it always got caught up on things. And then I kind of suggested this way, and people, from my experience, have given me good feedback from it. Um, so I that's why I'm doing this video because I've. I've should have done this a while ago. I think I got this method off Goldie store bulletin board way back when, when it was still a thing. I can't remember though. Uh, but yeah, I've had a lot of good feedback with this and it has served me well. So I kind of am just trying to pass on that to other people. So as a finished product, you can kind of see how it will cover just a bit more under the chin. I, again, I wear a neck underneath anyways, but this will kind of just cover that little areas below my, like my, my neck I might be exposed. We'll see if this gets in the way. I have a feeling it might. Um, so I might have to tie this actually pretty tight on the edges. So this basically won't move much at all. It'll just be an extension, which means I'll have to see if that actually gets in the way of anything um, in terms of actually head movements and stuff like that. Cause obviously I bought this mask for better visibility. And if I can't move my head, that's kind of a problem. One thing you can do with this plastic though, is you can just heat it up and just stretch it out a bit. So I can always do that if I need to, like it stretches pretty easy, but obviously it's going to go back to its shape. So if you just heat up right here, it will just, you can flare it out a little bit more, which might help with what I need, but that's about it for this video. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful. Hopefully um, you found it interesting. Again, just trying to share some of my knowledge for this and my experience. And also again, totally personal preference. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. I'm always for more protection. So I do this. It's generally a good idea to cut the ends off though so they're not super dangly like that because I found you can feel it on your face and it gets annoying. But I'm just gonna leave this because I don't really have much ice right now anyway, so I'm just gonna wear it in my basement, see how it is, and I'll adjust it based on that. Yeah, I always recommend wearing this just for extra protection. I'm always for protection. If you don't have to get hurt, then why get hurt is kind of my motto. Um, so anyways, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully it was helpful. If any of my videos are helpful and you do buy a piece of equipment or gear because of it, please reach out to your manufacturer, let them know on social media. Helps me get on the radar so if I can get more gear so I can review, do more reviews, testing and stuff like that and continue to make content. Also remember to follow the links in the description to Pure Hockey or Pure Goalie. If you're in the US, if following that link and making a purchase gets me a kickback so it helps support the channel so I keep doing what I'm doing. And if you are looking for beer league jerseys, check out jerseysmadeeasy.com in the description as well. That also helps support the channel if you make a purchase of custom jerseys from there. So thank you very much for watching and take it easy. You're watching hockeyreviews.ca.